Hey guys, I'm Sage Valentine and I'm back here to review another episode of AMC's The Walking Dead Season 9, episode number 11, entitled Bounty. So let's just get down to it. Pretty much the episode opens with a flashback of Jerry telling Ezekiel and Carol that his wife Nabila is pregnant. She's eight weeks to be exact and they're all happy. It's a really cute scene. Then we see Jesus and Tara coming to meet them. We actually see Jesus ride in before... Tara and that's when you realize that this whole rendezvous happened long before he died but not too long after the dust up between Michonne, Maggie and Daryl. Whatever happened was pretty bad to split up the communities, send Daryl into exile, send Maggie to I believe the commonwealth and make Michonne so dark personality wise. Alright so Ezekiel gives them medication. Tara said she won't go back to the hilltop because she took too many supplies, more than what she told the council that she was going to take. She hands Ezekiel the charter that Michonne wrote up. Remember that charter that she and Rick were talking about and it took Michonne forever to finally sit down and just write it out? Ezekiel believes that one day they all will come together. I love Ezekiel because he's such a light in the tunnel. But the one thing that I know from watching Walking Dead and reading the comic books is that the shiny, happy people in this series don't last long. That's not even a spoiler. I could just feel like Ezekiel's end is coming soon because he's starting to become the voice of reason and... We all know how that goes. But I do believe that they all, all the, you know, the Hilltop Kingdom and Alexandria will come together at one point. So Carol decides that she wants to come on whatever hunt it is that Ezekiel is having with um, Diane. Um, it was Diane. It was Jerry and some other characters that we really didn't catch their names. And on a side note, Jerry and Nabila at this point have three kids. Wow. And each of those kids look like they're under the age of five. So Jerry and Nabila were some busy bees. And Ezekiel talks about the kingdom preparing for the fair. Comic book people, we all know what that means. If you don't read the comic book, just sit back. You'll see exactly what that means. So Ezekiel is pretty much up to beat. But the thing that hit me was that he doesn't know anything about the Whisperers. Because I'm like, why is he so positive about everything? And I realized he doesn't know. Michonne and them did not tell the kingdom. And if memory serves... That's something from canon, but I won't go into that. But I think that happened in canon as well. And if the show is truly following that timeline, I have an idea of what's going to happen next. So, speaking of the Whisperers, Alpha is standing outside of the hilltop. She doesn't have her mask on. All she really wants is Lydia, and she brought a few Whisperers with her. And she won't take no for an answer. She says that she means them no harm, which is why she's showing her face. And when things don't go her way, she signals for more whispers. Now, we don't know, be it the comic book, TV show, but mostly I'm talking about the comic book. We don't know how many whispers there are. Me, I got the general consensus that... There are more whispers than saviors because we never get an exact number of how many there are. So I always figured that there were more whispers than saviors. And the TV show seems to be following that same consensus by showing us a couple here and a couple there. But part of me believes, like I did when I was watching the comic book, that the whispers have always been watching Rick and the gang. They've always been looming in the background. Part of me believes, TV show-wise, that they're responsible for some of those deaths that were unexplainable on this TV series. But anyway, Connie is hiding in the corn, and Kelly saw her because Kelly's on the, she's on the wall with um, 
Yumiko, Magna, and Tara. So Earl apparently burnt himself after having an arthritis flare-up or something, and Tammy is all upset about that. Um, Alden is like a son to Tammy and Earl, because you know their son died. Don't forget about that. Daryl doesn't want to send Lydia back to Alpha, because after their conversation, she was obviously abused, he was abused, and he doesn't want to send her back into that dark situation, whatever it is. So Alpha says she's done talking, either bring her Lydia or there will be conflict. And Daryl says that he's done talking as well. So then we jump back to Ezekiel and the crew, and apparently they have a side mission. They want to head to this movie theater. And they want to do this before they pick up, because the whole hunting party thing is for elk meat, because there are all these elks. I believe it's elks, because I know elk is one, elk is two. There are a bunch of them, pretty much, in the area, and they want to hunt them because they'll have enough meat, not only to feed everybody, but also to have enough meat for, again, the fair. They keep bringing that word up again. <laughs> so... When they get to the movie theater, Carol's just like, you guys want to go to the movie theater? And we see this theater surrounded by a bunch of walkers. And I'm like, oh boy, let's see how this is going to go. Then they jump back to Alpha. And she tells two whisperers to go grab up Alden and Luke. Then we see a female whisperer in the back holding a baby who is crying, obviously, because it is a baby. Daryl's surprised by that. Alpha proposes a trade. Give me Lydia, I'll give you back Alden and Luke. Carol is iffy. Now we jump back to Carol and Ezekiel and them at the movie house. She's iffy about this movie thing. Ezekiel wants them to pick up a projector bulb so that they can use it for the projector that they have at the kingdom so they could show movies to everyone, specifically the kids. And bring up the morale and have these movies for, again, the fair. They keep using that word. So Jerry hits this boombox and he kind of presses play and plays this like funky song that keeps saying like, it's all right now, that type of thing. And it distracts the walkers, but I had a feeling eventually that the batteries were going to die because where are they going to find Duracell batteries? <laughs> Anywhere within the area. So we get to see the walkers inside of the theater building and they're particularly gnarly and cool looking and creative. The popcorn walker was my favorite one, how she kind of crawled out the popcorn maker. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So anyway, it's Jerry's job to retrieve the projector bulb. Now the dead are coming towards the hilltop because of the commotion and the talking and Alpha's none too happy about this because she mentioned something about them talking loud or talking in general so she tells two of the whisperers to go and divert that mini herd away from the hilltop for now then all of a sudden Daryl learns from one of the teenagers I can't remember her name I know she has like dark curly hair and glasses that Lydia is missing which means Henry is missing. And then we see the lady with the baby and she's still trying to silence the baby. She keeps looking at Alpha and Alpha's looking at her like, you can't silence that baby? And I'm just like, what is she gonna do with this baby? <laughs> and the walkers who are being diverted away, away are all of a sudden diverted back towards the area because they hear that baby. And the woman is whimpering in tears but she takes down her wrap and she puts the baby on the ground and I'm like oh god now what the hell does that mean and then I realized that it obviously meant that that baby was going to be sacrificed to the walkers but still so Alpha basically says listen if the mother can't quiet the child then the dead will so I was right 
Enid goes to get Henry and Lydia because at first Daryl was going to get them because the girl with the curly hair and glasses, she said she knew where they went. But Enid was like, no, 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 I know him. I remember when he was a kid, I can talk to him and get him to see reason. Meanwhile, Magnus Group and Tara, who are on the wall, they start banging on the wall, trying to distract the walkers away from the crying baby. Well, Connie, being the badass as she is, decides to go and save that baby. And she runs back into the corn. And I thought that scene was so cool because they decided to give us her point of view. Because we know that Connie is deaf. And we were kind of put in her situation for a second. We watched her kill all those walkers until Daryl finally saved her. But still, that was awesome. And for a minute there, that scene did not look good. But I'm glad that she was saved by Daryl, Tammy, Kelly, and Earl. I believe that was Earl. So Jerry starts to extract the projector bulb. Ezekiel is very positive about hilltop kingdom and alexandria having the fair carol's just like i don't know i don't want you to get your hopes up and it doesn't happen and then carol starts talking about how they should talk to jesus about taking them in if things get worse and at least we could find a better place than the kingdom and it dawned on me i was like yeah carol doesn't know that jesus died yet and again, they don't know about the Whisperers, but I truly believe they're about to learn about them very, very soon. So then, one of the guys, I call them the Knights, he comes to Ezekiel and he tells him, listen, the walkers are coming now, the boombox died. Jerry, in haste, is trying to pull the bulb out and he drops it from the projector all the way down to the mini herd downstairs but it's cushioned in bubble wrap and everything but still i would be so upset if that was me so henry and lydia are at that teen hangout spot where henry got super drunk and met those teenagers and they took him out into the woods and left him to almost be eaten by a walker to battle a walker either way henry was out of luck at that point so lydia says you know what my mom broke her own rules by coming to get me. And she's surprised by that. And Henry's like, don't be fooled by that because your mom hasn't changed. I don't believe it. So Edith comes along and she tells Henry about the situation. And he says that it's not fair. It's not right. And he talk and then all of a sudden Enid talks about her parents, how she saw them die, and then the loss of Carl and how it affected her. But she didn't say Carl's name. She just said someone that she was close to or someone that she loved. She tells Henry that you live with it by saying, staying who you are and not by letting the bad things get to you. On a side note, no matter what anybody said to henry it was going to end the way it ended in this episode i just want to get that one out i had a feeling that was going to happen either way so lydia decides she just wants to go she wants to leave she says that she'll be okay as she kisses henry and this is when i really realized that henry is teenage carl in this scene although his storyline i believe is going to be different in the way that it progresses that's all that i'll say about that so alden and luke head back to the hilltop this is during the exchange and lydia heads to her mom now lydia gets the taste slapped out of her mouth for not calling her mom alpha yeah alpha is psychotic so as if you didn't know that already keep that in mind that alpha is psychotic that's why she's my favorite villain up to this point in the comics because of how crazy she is we have only begun to chisel through how crazy she is there's more well we get back to the situation at the movie theater and carol decides you know what we need to get this projector bulb because ezekiel is kind of iffy about it they all want to leave except for carol so we get to see a bit of a scene of Everybody at the movie theater taking down the walkers just to grab up the projector bulb. And then they're heading back to the kingdom. 
and they're chatting they're being all positive and they're riding on the street heading to the kingdom and we see this sign and on the back of the sign it's like a pie symbol and I'm like, what the hell is that symbol? And does that have anything to do with the whispers? Like, what's going on with that? So then Henry comes to Daryl and wonders how Daryl can live with himself by sending Lydia back as if Daryl hadn't been saying a couple of minutes prior, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes prior in this episode that he didn't want to send Lydia back, but... Okay, Daryl said the world is blank and you live with it. Daryl basically did what he had to do. I mean, what else were they going to do? Let this girl stay here and let Alpha do whatever the heck she was going to do? Sometimes I feel like Henry is so jaded and naive, and I say this every single review, but that kid is not long for this zombie apocalypse at all. So Ezekiel put the charter in a glass case when they got back to the uh, kingdom. We get to see a montage of Magna's group drinking, but something is bothering Connie. Enid and Alden are kissing. It looks like they're about to have sex, and I'm just like, where's the contraception? Because we don't need any more babies running around here at this point. <laughs> Tammy and Earl... Are taking care of the baby so this will help them deal with the loss of their son I know it's been like five six years but still this will help them deal with this Jerry carries around his youngest baby while Nabil is asleep in the bed Henry is thinking then he leaves the bed and I'm like all right here goes Henry running off the girl with the curly hair and glasses comes to Daryl and tells Daryl that Henry left a note Connie sees Daryl leaving with Dog, and she asks to come with him, and he says no, and she says, no, I'm coming with you. I can't live with it either. And then we see Connie traveling with Dog and Daryl. I really like this episode. Now, granted, I didn't get to see the episode until later because I was watching the Oscar telecast, but I watched this episode, I think, around like 11 o'clock last night. But anyways, um, I liked it a lot. And I'm so looking forward to episode 12 because I cannot wait to see Ryan Hurst portray Beta. I've been looking forward to seeing Beta ever since Alpha showed her wonderful face. <laughs> so you all take care and let me know what you thought of this episode. I'm trying to encourage you guys to leave some comments so we can chat about this. But um, other than that, I will see you guys on March 4th when I post this review. So this is Sage Valentine. Signing off. Bye, guys. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>